Graduation season is upon us, and the class of 2022 has a lot to celebrate. For the very first time in two years, commencement ceremonies are being held in person instead of virtually. Tomorrow morning, one woman graduating at the top of her class at St. Francis College, Antonina Horsov, currently living in Brooklyn, but her home is in the Ukraine, which is being, of course, ravaged by the war. And Antonina is joining us live this morning to share what these last three months have been like for her. So, Antonina, good morning to you. First and foremost, congratulations on being named the valedictorian of your class. That is no easy feat. It's a mark that should be celebrated. Thank so, you. Thank you guys for having me today. Of course. Thank you. So, you know, all eyes on you at the big graduation. Have you finished writing your uh, valedictorian speech yet? Yes, I actually have. I think because of what's going on right now in my country, it's so hard to actually appreciate uh, what has been given me by my college. You know, to be named the valedictorian is a very big deal. And finally, my hard work is paying off. Uh, but definitely, I have finished writing my speech. And I am going to try to also focus, you know, the attention of our graduates, not only on the big day that we have before us, but also uh, to make sure that we can appreciate and be yeah be grateful for the privilege that we have to be able to celebrate the graduation under a peaceful sky while you know some of my fellow ukrainian graduates are not able to do this right now because there are some of them are fighting in the front lines you know mm -hmm. so it's very important for me to use my voice i'm very honored yeah that's wonderful. to be able to do so but i'm but a lot of people are wondering how did you end up at saint francis college all the way from the ukraine oh that's i mean i've been in the united states for the last seven years so First, I um, had my associate's degree from ASA College, mm -hmm. um, and then I transferred to St. Francis. I never planned to come to the United States, mm -hmm. but because I, we had an exchange program during my first degree in Ukraine, that's work and travel. We could come for the summer, you know, to work, uh, to be able to practice our English. So that's how I, I was able to actually, you know, make friends here, try yeah. out. And then the first time that I came to New York, I was so, uh, you know, taken aback by Manhattan and everything. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, this is so amazing here. You know, these <laughs> buildings, these people, this speed and everything. So I was like, I need to try yeah. to try it out. I need to try my powers here if I can take, you know, if I can make it here. So then I got into college and then I came. So I was just I need to pursue my my, I guess my new goals here. I think you've certainly made a mark so far being valedictorian there. You know, I want to talk a little bit about what's happening back in Ukraine. Obviously, you're following it very closely. The president, Vladimir Zelensky, he addressed the opening night of the Cannes Film Festival, right, Anthony? Urging filmmakers to use their platform to raise awareness of what's happening in the country. And he gave the speech just before ordering Ukrainian soldiers into Mariupol, which we've been following closely this morning and surrendering, giving Russia control of the southern region. So do you have friends fighting on the front lines? You know, what has your communication been like with folks you know in Ukraine? Yeah, so I, I am pretty sure that President Zelensky, you know, and all our government is doing everything possible and impossible in order to save the lives of the Ukrainian soldiers. And that's also one of the reasons that I wanted to make sure that I can use my voice to the most mm -hmm. that I can to make sure that we can pay attention to that because it's very important those guys have have been giving our, their lives, you know, for our freedom and for the freedom of my country. So, and also, yes, I do have friends that are in the front lines. I do have one of my closest friends uh, and her husband are in the border guard of, you know, border guard service of Ukraine. And a lot of friends are volunteering, you know, they have just volunteered, they left their jobs, they left their studies, everything, they just went to, you know, to protect our country. So, Yes, I do know a lot of people and it's very hard. You know, we are trying to communicate as much as we can every day, if possible. You know, even an emoji works, you know, even wow. whatever they could give me is, is that, okay. You know, as long as I know that they are good, we're good. Yeah, so is that the extent of your communication then with friends and family there? At the beginning, yeah, at the beginning or sometimes with some friends that are in the hot spots, you know, they can't tell you where they are. They, they are not, and we obviously understand we don't want to know more than we need to. Mm -hmm. We just want to make sure that they're fine. You know, one of my, this friend that I'm talking about, um, her son is actually my godson. So mm -hmm. at the beginning, she she was stationed at the south of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So when they started breaching, you know, they were, she even texted us, you know, that guys, if anything happens, take care of my son. We were oh, like, wow. oh my God, what are you talking about? Don't, Goodness. you know, and we were like all freaking out. We don't know anything. Yeah. So with her, it was the, f the toughest because we were like, you know, don't tell us where you are. Don't tell us anything. Just send us an emoji that you're okay. Right. Send us anything, you know, that we know that you're good, that you're, that you're okay, that you're in, you know, relative My safety. Goodness. So All of this say. happening, of course, while you're continuing your studies as well, focused on school here and your family, your family lives in the western part of the country, right? So what are the conditions like yes. for them? So, of course, 
they're relatively, you know, in safety okay. because uh, the front lines are far away from them. But of course, it is, it is still scary because the air sirens are going off from time to time. They have to go to the basement to hide, uh, you know, because you never know where the rockets is going to hit. It's a very uh, stressful, you know, environment to be in. I can't even imagine mm -hmm. how they are. I am freaking out here because I can't do anything yeah. about it. But, you know, it's very stressful. But still there, you know, they started to go back to work. My siblings are, you know going to school again and they're trying to maintain the new normal i guess yeah. so to say um because they have to but yeah that's what it is yeah. i'm I'm, ha I'm very you know happy that they're in safety right now because you know they're far away from the front lines but still the rockets yeah. and the air sirens that's very very worrying yeah and i'm sure you've been doing everything that you can to uh to help your family your friends and, and just everyone back in your home country so since the war began you actually led several donation drives or what have you what have you been able to do so far and send back home yeah so you know once this started i feel like a lot of ukrainians like me the ones that are far away wanted to do whatever we could even though we felt that we were doing nothing mm -hmm. as compared to you know what people are doing back home but yeah we were uh, leading donations we were trying to collect money we we're trying to buy different supplies to send home you know I never thought that I'm going to have to learn about tactical equipment and what's the wow. difference between a quality tourniquet and not a quality tourniquet and what is right. used for. And it's just craziness. Yeah, we were trying, you know, to send from here. I know that a lot of Ukrainians have in the first couple of days have or have uh, created organizations that are sending planes filled with everything, you know, that's needed. Wow. It's just the Ukrainians, you know, the Ukrainians um, hospitals and everything. They're sending us lists of medications that are needed, everything that's, you know, different equipment that's in need. So whatever we could send from here, we do it from here. I know that a lot of it is being bought in Europe and then transferred to Ukraine. So, you know, Ukrainians have, have done tremendous work, yeah. especially the volunteering and this, you know, the volunteers is, is just incredible. They were finding stuff and, you know, in, in, I don't know, in hours, yeah. I guess. And, if, and the, you know, any soldiers needed something, it's incredible. Yeah, the thing, and every little bit is helping, and it's the incredible things that you're doing from afar, right? These drives make a big difference and a big impact. And while you're doing all of that and worried about your friends and worried about your family, you maintained a 4.0 <laughs> GPA. Wow. So for how and <laughs> and uh, and what what do you grad? What's your degree in? What do you what do you, what's your, what are you graduating with? I'm graduating. Um, I'm. Graduating, the degree is a dual degree. It's Bachelor um, of Science and Master of Science in Accounting. Wow. Um, yeah, so I, so, you know, I think the most part I would have to thank my college. The St. Francis College oh. was incredible during this, uh, you know, because when it all started, I was so disheveled, like I couldn't even focus on my studies. I couldn't do my assignments, anything. And they were so nice and they were, you know, supportive they were reaching out all the time offering me counseling offering me different kind of support they uh, contacted me with different funds that would help ukrainian students as well it wow. was just great i i just need to you know bow down to them as well because whatever work they're doing is is mm. you know very high level the college is amazing well, yeah, we are whatever they're doing they were always fighting for us but yeah i'm sorry no, they're always fighting for us but in this case it was just you know I'm very grateful yeah. to be a part of this community, of St. Francis community. Well, we are bowing down to you yeah. for being able to maintain your grades, become valedictorian, while, all while trying to help everyone back in Ukraine. Uh, but congratulations to you, yes. Antonina Horzov. We, we are so proud of you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, guys. Antonina.